have a sound in your head. The imagination is the most powerful tool that we have as musicians. So you've always got that sound that you want to make on the trombone. And you can make that sound up yourself by taking little bits on different plays that you've heard and create with your own imagination, create the sound that you want to make. And then you need to get the feedback from the sound that you're actually making, the sound that's coming out of the end of your bell, from the sound that you've got your, in your head. Ultimately, we match those two things up, and that's the most important thing, the sound that we make is the most important thing that we ever learn on the trombone, no matter how good we are, no matter how high, how fast, how loud we can play. It's the sound we make that keeps people listening. Listen to music. It might sound like a strange thing to say, but ultimately, if we want to become professional musicians, or even just competent amateurs playing in our local youth orchestra, it's important that we understand the idiom that we want to go into. Be avid listeners. Listen to everything you can. Listen to the Mahler symphonies. Listen to Bruckner symphonies. Listen to Baroque music. Listen to modern music. Listen to jazz. Listen to brass bands. Listen to everything you can. But become a comp compulsive listener because by that way, we build our imagination and we understand then why we practice. Don't use equipment you can't deal with. 40, 50 years ago, we didn't have the choices that we have now. Back then, it was either, do you want a trombone and a mouthpiece or not? They were all one size, and there was really very little choice. Now, we've got everything you could possibly imagine with regarding size of, of, of instruments and mouthpieces. And But be careful. Don't play on something that makes life too difficult for you. Just because your hero can play on an enormous trombone with an enormous mouthpiece. It doesn't mean to say that you, age 12, 14, 16, even 18 up to 20 years old, it doesn't mean to say that you can deal with that. First of all, make sure you've got equipment that allows you to play everything you'd like to play on the trombone, and then decide on the style, then decide on the size of sound, the size of instrument that you want to use. Always have a warm-up before you start practicing. It's something that sometimes we forget, but it's incredibly important to make sure the muscles are working properly. And also something that we forget is the first stage of the warm-up is actually the breathing. Before we even do anything on the mouthpiece or the trombone, make sure that we've got that good, relaxed <sighs> airflow going through. And when we do this, remind ourselves of <sighs> how lucky we are to be doing what we do. It's also something that we forget. It's that wonderful feeling of Ah, <sighs> this is great. The phone's not going to ring. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to play the trombone. And that's how it starts. And then we release the air through the mouthpiece like this. <sighs> The lips stay neutral. They vibrate. We just release the air through the lips and into the mouthpiece. <sighs> Never use the tongue when you do mouthpiece practice. The resistance in the mouthpiece is just so completely different to the instrument, it's not going to gain us anything. In fact, it's going to give us problems. And you can practice on the mouthpiece, just swooping around the range, incredibly relaxed, for up to 10 minutes if you want. It's very therapeutic. Have a routine. Our practice must be disciplined and organized. I have a practice routine that I've been doing now for over 35 years. And on that routine, on this exercise, one from the Arban, one from the La Fosse, one from Blazovic. I know, in this case, I'm working on my slide technique. In this one, I'm working on my hair register. In this one, I'm working on my legato. And it's like going back to the basic 10 commandments of how I play the trombone that I start with every day. So we go back to the same exercises. Always have goals. Always have routines. Never pick up the trombone and wonder what you're going to practice. Organize your slide technique. The trombone is different to other brass instruments, easy instruments like the trumpet or the euphonium or the tuba, by the fact that it uses a slide. Now, this trips us up. This causes a lot of problems. It breaks our airflow up, and it also causes problems with the timing of the tongue and the air. So we need to understand how the slide works. This is the timing point to everything that we do. Now, before we go any further, don't go crazy about the speed of your slide. A lot of people talk about using a fast or a slow slide arm. It's not about that, it's about the timing. Here's a good exercise. So we move the slide as we articulate. That's the point. The slide says the note's gonna happen now, now, now. 
And if we listen also, the slide moves exactly the same in legato as in detached. Never push with the tongue. We articulate notes, of course, by using the tongue, but so many people get into a lot of trouble by hitting the back of the teeth so hard with the tongue that it interrupts the airflow and causes problem with problems with the throat. The basic rule, number one, it's not what you don't do with the tongue, it's about how much pressure there is behind it. Don't ever push, it's just a touch. That's the mantra, the tongue is just a Never, or never hit. Clarity is about the relaxation of the tongue, not about how hard we use it. And also another misnomer in brass playing is we keep saying we should use the tip of the tongue. I can't use just the tip of my tongue. Actually, my tongue is contacting all of the way around the top. It's not possible just to use the tip of your tongue. But let's go back to the main point. Don't ever push with your tongue. Understanding legato. There are two kinds of legato that we use on the trombone. There's the natural legato that passes across harmonics. And then again, because we don't have valves, we have to use a different legato when we go along the same harmonic. And the articulation that we use on that harmonic legato is different from the one that we use from detached articulation. It's like a lick. It's like a... Thu, thu, thu. You can hear it in the trombone. Some people to say just to say a softer da or a loo or something like that. But let's be clear, it's either detached or it's legato. Legato is a different articulation to the one that we use for detached. And when we go across the harmonics with a harmonic legato, the important thing is to think about constant air all of the time. Play scales. I usually aim to play every scale every day, or if I'm more honest. All of the majors or all of the minors, every day, one or the other. All music that we play pretty much is made up of scales. And it's important that from a very early age, we understand the tonality, we understand the feel and the emotion of scales. Each scale has a different emotion. Apart from the other technical aspects about learning to play across the range, developing our sound, working on the intonation, working on our artic articulation, there are any number of things that we work on with scales. Now, there are two ways we can work on them that are the most important for me. The one that you're probably used to doing is the... Nice and slow. Over to, but you have to breathe on the way up. And if we're not careful, we get what we call an embouchure break, where we reset the mouthpiece. So practice the scales two ways. Once slowly, and once... So we cover two octaves, as high as we'd like to go. It doesn't matter whatever standard you are at, as long as we get those two octaves covered without any break in the embouchure. And then, of course, we play them legato as well. The lips respond to the speed of the air. I think we make a bit of a mistake when we think that when we play high, we tighten the lips up, and when we play low, we relax them. That's preemptively doing something that can be done quite naturally by the air. Um, as we go higher, we put the air through the instrument faster, and the lips have to work that bit harder just to hold in position. And when the air goes slower as we go lower, they relax. So we develop the high register by increasing the airspeed, and the lips have to work harder as we go higher. If we preemptively clench, we all recognize that one instead of the relaxed where the lips will just react to the speed of the air. It's a difficult concept, but once you get it, it will make a big difference to your high register.